call this meeting to order of the Salmon Consolidated School District Board of Trustees meeting at uh, regular board meeting of Tuesday, Tuesday, July 15th at 7 p.m. Item number one, call meeting to order. Uh, establish roll call. Please state I am present when I call your name. Hector Ladd, Vice President. Present. Oscar Medrano, Secretary. Present. Angel Mendes, Trustee. Present. Ana Cruz, Trustee. Present. Fatima Huerta, Trustee. Ileana Gonzalez, trustee. Present. Mr. Limon, superintendent. Present. And uh, Mr. Torres, attorney. Present. Item, next item on the agenda is item number three, Pledge of Allegiance to the United States and Texas flags. Leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance is Micaela Rihanna Garcia. She's from Berta Cavasa Middle School. Micaela Rihanna Garcia is the daughter of Mr. and Silvia Garcia. She is 14 years old and was promoted to ninth grade. Her favorite subjects include math and science, Michaela was co-captain of the Beta Cavasa cheerleading squad. She was a member of BC band and qualified to participate with the all-region band. She served as the National Junior Honor Society president and earned the gold award for volunteering for over 230 hours. Other activities include basketball, volleyball, track, cross country, and golf. Other awards include system data entry award, president's award, perfect attendance, and math award. Leading us in the invocation is also from Berta Cavasa is Joseph Philip Munoz. Joseph Munoz is the son of Maricela Pedraza. He is 14 years old student and just completed eighth grade at Berta Cavasa Middle School. His favorite subjects are math and science. Some of his hobbies include playing his instrument and listening to music. Joseph was a very active member of the chess team. This year he traveled with a team to Georgia to compete at the national level. As a member of the National Junior Honor Society, he completed over 200 hours of community service and was awarded the President's Volunteer Service Award. This year's award include highest achievement in math, social studies, reading, ELA, and science commended performance on math, reading, social studies, and science star exams. AMC math contest, second place, perfect attendance, distinguished top 5% of his class, and valedictorian of his eighth grade class. Will the parents of these uh, fine students please uh, stand up and be recognized? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Please bow your heads. Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us all to safely arrive here tonight. Thank you, Lord, also for the many blessings we received this past school year. As we approach a new school year, Lord, bless our school board members, administration, staff, and personnel, and guide them in making decisions that will benefit the school district. I pray that you continue to give them the wisdom and knowledge to allow our school district to be successful. Lord, please watch over us and guide us all safely home tonight. In your mighty name we pray, amen. Mr. Munoz and Ms. Garcia, if you could step up here. Certificate of appreciation for your participation today. Thank you, Thank you guys so have done a great job. Good job. Good job. Recognize the principal usually also. Good job. At this time, would the principal please stand up, Mr. Ray Saldana? We've got move to item number five, special recognitions, Sam High School, Skills USA National Leadership and Skills Conference. Mr. Vendon, will you come forward, please? Thank you, members of the board. We'd like to express our uh, honor to inform you that our Skills USA team under the uh, category of arts, audio, video, career pathway uh, received a bronze medal at Nationals, which uh, took place in uh, Kansas City, Missouri, 
June 22nd through the 27th. Uh, we have three students to recognize. We have Hector Rangel, whose parents are Pedro Rangel and Juana Garcia. Brianna Carrera, whose parents are Ricardo Machuca, Melissa Carrera, and Diamanta Esquivel, whose parents are Joe Esquivel and Gloria Calvillo. These students were to be recognized. They're not here today. But again, just to let you know that uh, we feel uh, very honored that they were able to represent us at uh, Kansas City and brought back the bronze medal. Thank you. Great job, Mr. Rendon, and I'm sure they're enjoying their summer vacation after such hard work, but thank you very much. We have to item number six, superintendent's reports. Thank you, Mr. President. At this time, we have the announcement of the overnight trips that have been scheduled. High School FFA State Convention in Fort Worth, July 14th through the 18th. We have the disbursements, the disbursements by organization. We also have the San Benito Consolidated Independent School District Investment Report for March 1st, 2014 to May 31st, 2014. Uh, e says presentation to the trustees by UT Health Science Center at Houston regarding instructional support service by the Children's Learning Institute. I just uh, spoke this afternoon about 15 uh, to Mr. Uh, Keith Milner. He was still in Dallas. Uh, the earliest flight he could get would put him here at about 935 in the evening. I indicated to Mr. Uh, Milner that perhaps we could reschedule. He gave me the date of July 24th as an available date for him to reschedule. So as the board wishes later on, we, would, uh, we could get that rescheduled. Uh, we have the data validation monitoring discipline update. Uh, Mr. Ruben Franco. Good evening, members of the board. Uh, a few months ago, I presented uh, this particular item and it was basically explaining that the district was out of compliance with our, our reporting for discipline referrals uh, to TEA. Uh, again, it wasn't an astronomical amount of, of data that was incorrect. It was only like six students. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, the compliance for that is very high. And so we needed to submit a, a um, corrective action plan. Uh, I shared that corrective action plan with the board members, not at the board meeting, but I think uh, in the following Friday update that, that came after that. <clears throat> and if you remember from that, it was a very small document. And today I left a, a similar document. Actually, it's the same document, but with one extra row, uh, which is not legal size paper that you have. And basically all it's doing is addressing one extra item that they, in our, dis in our discussions with TEA after doing this initial submission, they requested one other uh, action be taken, and that is to modify <clears throat> our invitation form that we use for inv invitating, invitating, <laughs> inviting the parents to come to the expulsion hearing. Uh, we didn't have some language that's, that should be in there providing them with their rights, to due process rights, including appealing to the school board. And so in the process of submitting documentation on our on those six students, they noticed that we didn't have that. So they expanded it now to include us modifying our forms to include the proper language. So if you notice on that last row that you see on that updated um, CAP, uh, it shows that the under the corrective action, <clears throat> it shows Formal limitation to the expulsion hearings will be updated to include language addressing student rights to have representation at the expulsion hearing and or student parent rights uh, to appeal. And um, the people that are gonna be responsible for making sure that happens are gonna be myself and Mr. Gonzalez. Uh, and these forms will be updated prior to the start of the school year. With the submission of this corrective action plan, plus a copy of the agenda item from today, uh, to TA, I think that'll clear us uh, from this point going forward for this next school year. And uh, we don't anticipate we'll be in this situation uh, again. I have one question for you, Mr. Michael. <clears throat> this issue on the, uh, the sign-in document, uh, it's not a policy issue. We do have the correct policy. We're just not incorporating the language in their sign-in sheet. 
it's it's not a sign-in sheet. It's a it's a letter. It's referred to as a letter of invitation. But anytime a parent uh, is going to have a student expelled, we will sub, we will send them a, a notice telling them that there is a hearing that they're to come to where that expulsion will be discussed. It's that form that we send them that doesn't have that extra language that explains to them that they have due process rights uh, and and that they can also have representation if they'd like. Uh, I think that's conveyed to them because it is written in our policy, but it's not specifically stated on the form that we submit to them. And so TA wants us to be in compliance with that, and therefore they suggest that we make this change. Any additional questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Franco. Item G is House Bill 5, the school district evaluation of performance in the community and the student engagement, compliance and accountability. Mr. Gonzalez has a presentation on that. Good evening, Board, uh, um, board of Trustees and, Mr. and Superintendent Limon. In front of you, you have a yellow uh, folder that will contain the PowerPoint presentation or the presentation that we'll talk about House Bill 5. House Bill 5, I'm sure we've heard throughout the whole year that there, that's the language that's being used now and it's used in three different, it changed three different areas when the state legislature met last year. They changed not only the graduation requirements, but the testing requirements, but they also added that each district has to do a self-evaluation on eight, uh, nine points that are not covered either through assessment or through other means in the district. So each district throughout the state of Texas had to do a self-evaluation on these components. So I'll present to you those components and, and the results that we had in our district. <clears throat> Texas law is section 39.045. And it says each school district shall evaluate one. We shall evaluate the state, state uh, the district performance. In other words, we need to give ourselves a rating as a district. And then each campus had to do an, uh, an individual self-assessment as well and assign them uh, a rating based on uh, the criteria that we established. Assigned the performance rating where we would what, based on the criteria and based on the the uh, instrument tool that we used. On each question, the, each campus was to rate themselves in each area and give, them, give, give themselves a rating of exemplary, recognized exemplary, excuse me, acceptable or unacceptable. Both uh, the overall performance, which was the district rating, uh, the district overall rating for each point, and then each of the individual factors uh, that I'll talk about in subse subsection B. The reporting had to be done through PEAMS, summer submission date no later than June 26, which we did make our cutoff, and uh, results were submitted to PEAMS and submitted to TEA timely. It, it also calls for that by August 8th, the district needs to post on either website or other means to post what the results were, not only for the district-wide rating, but also each individual campus will also post what they did in each of the criteria, each of the nine points that were rated. <clears throat> if we look at the Section B um, sheet, it tells us exactly the, eight, the nine areas which we were rated. One, we had to rate ourselves each campus. Each campus from elementary to high school had to rate themselves, and they had to rate themselves K through 12. So each area, each campus had to look at their fine arts, their wellness and physical education, community and parental involvement, and under that, specifically, they were looking for the opportunities for parents to assist students in preparing for assessments, tutoring programs that support students taking assessments, and opportunities for students to participate in community service projects. So under that criteria, we had to look at, specifically look at those three areas. We also had to look at um, D, 21st century workforce development programs throughout our district, secondary language acquisition programs, digital learning env uh, environment, dropout prevention strategies, education programs that benefit gifted and talented students. And finally, the last area which we had to look at was our compliance level with statutory reporting and compliance uh, re policy requirements. <clears throat> On the next page, again, it tells us that House Bill 5 requires to report each uh, performance rating to TEA and to make ratings publicly available. As noted earlier, TEA has uh, added a new coding to the PEAMS data standard, and the new codes uh, must be reported by submission summer three collection, which was June 26, which we did meet that date. I know when we presented earlier at the uh, curriculum uh, committee, I know that uh, what was asked was what were the areas or what did we look at in terms of 
the nine components. And what, we, what I did, went ahead and broke down, and these are not um, confined to, just these are just some of the examples, what we looked at, because what we had to do is, at the beginning of the year, uh, when we found out that we had to do this self-assessment as a district, we had to create this tool ourselves. So what uh, Region 1 did also is they assisted us by uh, providing different sessions throughout the, from December all the way to April, so that we could be, so we could be uh, informed and, and be a little more cohesive in our region in terms of how are we gonna rate ourselves, because each district was looking for the tool, looking for the areas and the criteria, because it was a self-assessment, it wasn't something that was given to us, and we knew how to score it. So basically what we had to do is look at, uh, create a district level committee, which we did, and uh, the department heads and, and a couple of principals were added to that district committee so that we could look at the criteria. We took region one's evaluation tool, and we also updated it to what we thought was effective or what we, we thought was uh, important here at San Benito. So we created our, our, we took the region two tool and then we tweaked it a little bit to create the evaluation tool that all the principals used uh, to evaluate their programs. <clears throat> Each sheet will tell you, uh, for example, we have fine arts. And some of the areas, I won't go through each bullet, but it tells you some of the criteria that we would look at. Like I said, it's not confined to this, but it was kind of a uh, guiding tool so that we could understand how we would we look at this and how would we create an, an assessment for uh, evaluation. So we looked at fine arts, of course, our levels of participation in UIL and other points there. And did we had to do the self-assessment, although we look at fine arts, we may think that it's only dominated by secondary campuses. We had to evaluate ourselves at the elementary all the way through uh, the uh, high school level. So it wasn't just subjected to certain areas, especially when you look at the dropout prevention and the uh, workforce development, that we tend to think that that's, a, that's at the secondary level. But we had to look at what are we doing in our district to offer these uh, activities and opportunities to students from K to 12. So when we look at this, we looked at the tool, we had to remember that it had to apply not only to high school, it had to apply to our elementaries as well. We also had to look at what we, how we would we apply it to our um, alternative uh, centers, because alternative education centers had to be evaluated on these components as well. So <clears throat> in front of you, I know that the committee had asked before, uh, some of the criteria that we looked at, and each individual section will show uh, what criteria we used. And then I do want to go ahead and go towards the back of your presentation. Some of the questions were on the second to the last page. The statutory reporting and policy requirements, what did that entail? That was the federal reporting we had to do uh, district-wide, some of the state reporting we had to do some of the requirements we also had at the local level, and those are some of the examples there. <clears throat> the last sheet will uh, show you that we, uh, based on all the evaluations, what we did is we took each um, evaluation tool from each campus, and we had a scoring criteria, and we wanted, uh, we're happy to say that every single point would, uh, for fine arts all the way down to reporting, we met, uh, we were rated uh, recognized. And I believe that that's uh, a good indicator where we stand right now. But of course, it also shows where there's room for growth and room for improvement. And I know that I've talked to uh, principals and to some of the directors, and they've looked at it and they've, uh, we've uh, reassessed and looked at, look at the type of services we're offering and look at the activities we're offering as well to see how we can improve uh, those offerings so that we can have uh, more either a, an improved evaluation to an exemplary level or sustain our recognized area there. So I do want to say that uh, uh, we are in a, we're in a good spot in terms of the eight components here in, in our reporting. And, but I do feel that with our after school program and with all the other incentives that we do in our district, I know that a lot of those uh, points will be elevated, especially since we know that our administrators uh, know what needs to be done to improve. And so we're willing, and I, I wholeheartedly believe that next year we'll have uh, some of these points exemplary, if not all of them as well. Okay. Any questions? I have a question yes. for you. Uh, this committee that you all uh, set up, uh, 
I'm, I'm assuming that you all had skills on evaluating what services were provided at what level of the district, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, are, are these somehow connected to our goals as well? And if they are, how, how is that moving forward to our next year's uh, uh, academic performance and evaluation? How is that being tied in? Okay. In the I know that we look at, what we've done is look at our district improvement plan and our campus improvement plans and, and notice that perhaps we need to improve in some of these areas or in, be inclusive of House Bill 5 now. Because I think, especially in my department, I know that in my department, I'm going to look at closely of how House Bill 5 requirements can be um, uh, embedded into some of our activities for our parents and for our students. So I know that each one of us as department heads and also as administrators are looking to see each one. And I know that uh, when we scored it, we were a little bit nervous at first because we didn't know what we were going to get. But I know that by looking at and some of the feedback we've gotten is that uh, we, we kind of, it, it's, it's like a self-reflection. Sure. And we kind of know where we stand and where we need to improve. But we also know where we can get some of this information and uh, where it ties into our district improvement plan, our campus improvement plans. Uh, some of our goals by department and also by uh, subject matter as well. Who, who establishes the, uh, those goals, those specific goals? I'm assuming that there is a baseline of all the different criteria that TEA provides you with, correct? Yeah, is this just for the House Bill 5? Right, for House Bill 5. For House Bill 5, what Region 1 did is they um, each, TEA didn't give us the evaluation criteria. Mm -hmm. They allowed the, um, the service centers throughout the Texas to help the local districts develop that tool. And Region 1 was very uh, successful or very uh, helpful in creating that uh, evaluation tool for us. And what they did is we, there was a series of three or four meetings in which uh, we sent district representatives to those meetings. And I know myself and a couple of other department heads were part of the regional committee that set up. And, uh, and uh, for example, I was the, the uh, representative for parental involvement uh, and the tool that we're going to use there. And so we came collectively throughout the, all the districts and created that criteria. So uh, the, one last question. So my assumption is that this is, th this is here to stay. This is something that uh, the state is pushing forward and uh, pretty much moving in a direction of self-evaluation and providing the services and goods for our community, correct? Yes. Okay. And I, uh, I believe that because this is a self-assessment, in other words, this is a tool that we created and we we um, evaluate ourselves, I can see how eventually it is going to change a little bit where it becomes more of a requirement. But this is a great indicator about how we're servicing our district in fine arts, wellness, so forth. Okay. So my, is my assumption correct when, uh, when a district level committee meetings, you all are involving your schools and your community, your parents, and they're providing feedback on showing how uh, how much effort is being conducted for all of these areas and how well it's being conducted for the community? Yes, we, well we did this year initially because we looked at the, we, we yeah, brought in some of our campus principals but we also brought in, we focused on the department heads that we're looking at these, at were responsible for these eight components. We can see next year how we can add or expand that district committee to include community members, business members, uh, expand it to, so we, we have a broader uh, representation of our district. And that's, that's what I would like to see, more community involvement yeah. and more feedback from, uh, from all levels, uh, yes. not so much just the administrators, but the teachers, yeah. get students involved, parents, and, and the community as well. I, I think this was a learning process, not only for our district, but throughout the state. And I know as, uh, I've, I've discussed it with other districts, uh, counterparts from other districts, and we look at how we're going to improve that next year, and one of them is to expand the uh, involvement of the community. Definitely, I commend this process. It's a it's thank a you. it's an eye opening for yes. for our for our students' future. Definitely, yes, thank, you. thank you very much okay. for your. Um, I have a question. Sure. Um, do you all have a parenting curriculum that you use with your parents, and um, do you have a list of parenting sessions or district information that is disseminated or provided for our parents? Yes. You know, in other words, um, if there's new programs coming into our school district, especially at the high school, mm -hmm. with dual enrollment or a new university coming in uh, to partnership with the district and parents need to know about this and how students can take advantage of that partnership, do you have all that in, in place 
Yeah, for my department? Yes. Yeah. Well, uh, going back to question or the question number one about the curriculum, mm -hmm. we're looking at what we can do next year. There is a curriculum that I'm very uh, excited about introducing. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, the, I would have to introduce it to the administrators because there's a funding cost to it. Mm -hmm. But I feel that it's something that other districts in the Valley are utilizing. Mm -hmm. And it is uh, bilingual. So that way we can present it not only to our English speakers, but our Spanish speakers as well. So that is something we're looking at for next year. Mm -hmm. and in terms of the activities that we offer, what we try to do is we try to partner with our district, with our different departments, so that we don't, um, um, I'm trying to find a word, uh, double, or we, we work more collaboratively in, in terms of the, the um, food and nutrition, the market department, because all of it has a parental component to it, right. so we want to be able to work together so that uh, we don't double our efforts and so that we can go ahead and, and create those activities. But uh, yes, and we will be updating our website as well so that it, parents can ex, uh, assess it and they assess some of the activities. And of course, our parents as parent center schedule is listed on our website as well and available okay. at our department as well. Okay, do you send out surveys as far as the to find out what the parents' needs are and what type of information they, they're they wanting to know from the school district or about different programs? We try to do parent surveys at the end of each activity, and that gives us a gauge as to how successful that activity was and how we need to improve it or perhaps present it again. And then at the end of the year, we've also, at our, at our parent recognition, we did our end of the year survey that parents did, so it gave us an indication of what we need to improve on or what they liked for this year. So we do survey our parents, but there's always uh, ways to improve that as well. Okay, yeah. excellent. Um, I hope you'll be able to share all of that with us. Sure. At least so that you know we can be aware of it. In case yes. parents come up to us and they ask yes. us about particular uh, programs or or activities or parenting sessions, that we can, you know, promote that also. Okay. I know that one of our goals also is to see how we can offer services to our working parents because I know that we have our core of very um, dedicated parent parent volunteers, right. but we want to be able to reach out to our working parents as well. Sure. So that may include offering evening classes or evening sessions or perhaps weekend sessions for those parents that may not be able to engage during the school time. Okay, well you, you have our support. Thank you. Um, I wanted to th thank you for giving us the criteria you used Thank you. to measure these because yes. I think that was one of the concerns I had, which is yes. how did you derive the score and how did you get there? Uh, and, and I commend you for, for giving us this and, and the job you've done. You. I will say that as, as since it is a self-assessment tool and one that you'll tweak, I'm assuming, on an mm -hmm. annual basis, it, it would be uh, good if you kept the trustees abreast yes. as to how you tweak it before you utilize it so that that way we have an understanding of what you're taking to the table when you start evaluating our, our performance. I know with the new coming school year, I, uh, uh, we'll be looking at the direction of the administration of what they would like to do in terms of how they want to comprise that district level committee and also uh, a series of meetings throughout the year so that we'll present that tool at the very beginning of the year so the principals will know what is ex uh, expected mm -hmm. and that way we can build on perhaps, you know, if we, if we know mid-year we're not where we need to be, we know the rest of the year where we need to improve. Job well done. I just I had a comment, um, kind of piggybacking off of what Mr. Menda said. I know when I conducted mine on campus, um, yes. we did take input from the community and from parents and business uh, members and, mm -hmm. and so, so forth. Um, sometimes some of the principals uh, and even the teachers, they, there's so much going on on a day-to-day -day basis that they don't give themselves credit for things that are actually already getting done. So I, I would venture to say that even though that you did score recognized, there's some areas that may have been exemplary, they just didn't give themselves a the credit. So bringing together a more, you know, um, a more varied um, committee mm. will be able to um, have those ideas, you know, be brought back to the table, whereas the principals might have overlooked some things and not yes. given themselves credit. I, I totally agree. And I, I know that uh, sometimes we, uh, we don't want to toot our own horns or we look at um, what we're doing on the campus and we may not think it applies, but it really does apply to what we do. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Gonzalez. That concludes the superintendent's report. Move on to item number seven. Recommend and approve the agenda of the regular board meeting of July 15th. Is that correct on the date? That's not correct. That'd be June the 10th. It should be June. It'd be June. What is this one? 
Okay, with any corrections or deletions? So moved. There's a motion to approve, a second. All those in favor, state by saying aye. Aye. Motion passes. Next item is an item of rate, public comments. I believe we do not have anyone registered for public comments. Move on to the next item. Uh, in order to promote efficient meetings, the board may act upon more than one item by a single vote through the use of a consent agenda. Consent items placed on the agenda shall be marked with an asterisk. Consent items are items for which the board discussion is no board discussion is anticipated and for which the superintendent recommends approval. Prior to the time for which approval consent item is had at the request of any member of the board of trustees, any item of the consent agenda may, may, shall be removed and given individual consideration. As such, we move on to the consent agenda, 1407A1, request for approval to participate in Region 1 Personnel Services Cooperative and the One App Consortium. 1407A2, request to approve the Instructional Improvement Support Services for Children Learning Institute at UT Health Science Center at Houston. 1407A3, request for approval of bids on walk-in purchases from the following items, school groceries, general hardware, general merchandise. 1407A4, request for approval of bids and paint products and supplies. Request of 1407A5, request for approval of contract to provide the annual financial and compliance audits for the fiscal year ending August 31st, 2014 and 2015. I'll question on that because 1407A6, request for approval of the superintendent to negotiate and enter into interlocal agreement and memorandum of understanding with the Cameron County in regards to JJAEP for 2014-2015. Uh, 1407A7, request for approval of 2014-2015 equity center membership. 1407A8, a8, request for approval of the 2013-2014 budget amendments. 1407A9, request for approval of budget transfers. Under curriculum and instruction, 1407A10, request for approval of Region 1 Library Services Media Cooperative Commitment for 2014 and 15 school year. 1407A11, request for approval of Communities and Schools Contract Agreement for 2014-15 school year. Under administration, 1407A12, request for approval to update board policy DC. 1407A13, request for approval to update board policy CH. 1407A14, request for approval of the 2014-15 optional flexible school day program application. I'll accept a motion to approve all those items not in question. There's a motion by Mr. Angel Mendez, a second by Mr. Leal. All those in favor, state by saying aye. Aye. Motion moves forward. Uh, we'll go back to 1407A2, request to approve the Instructional Improvement Support Services by the Children's Learning Institute of UT Health Science Center, Houston. Yes, I had a, a question on that one. I know at the previous finance meeting, uh, Mr. Leal and myself requested that a presentation be made, and I'm a little reluctant in approving this item uh, because of the cost associated with it uh, prior to hearing a presentation. So I would ask that we table this item. In your motion to table, would you like to uh, ask that it be scheduled for presentation? I think, if I'm not wrong, Mr. Wimon, the July 24th was the date the gentleman right. could come in? Mm -hmm. Okay. At five, uh, Five o'clock in the afternoon. Okay. Not being a committee meeting. Or? It's right before the uh, budget workshop. Oh, so we, we we'll scheduled the okay. budget workshop was scheduled for six thirty, so we could actually schedule this for five or five thirty. That's okay. There's a motion on the floor with uh, condition to be presented on July twenty fourth at five or five thirty. All those in favor, state by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Move to 1407A5, request approval of contract to provide annual and financial and compliance audits for fiscal year ending August 34th and 14 and 15. Uh, the only reason I question this is I do not believe we've selected a firm. Uh, with, uh, with that, uh, may I think we were all handed the proposals by the three firms. I will accept a... a uh, Motion to approve in the selection of a firm for this audit. 
I make a motion that we uh, select uh, Long Shilton. Uh, I forget the link. Yeah. 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 Well, maybe one motion at a time. Yeah. There's there's a motion on the floor for Long Shilton LLP. Is there a second? I'll second that. There's a second. All those in favor, state for saying aye. 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 Nay. 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 Four ayes, two nays. Motion passes. And I think we have a question on uh, 1407A12, request approval to update policy DC 13, also uh, policy CH. Uh, yes, Mr. President, I, I'd like to uh, table this item as, uh, to allow the other board members to review the uh, language and, that, and feel comfortable uh, reading the committee's recommendation of both items. I'll second that. Oh, thank you, sir. Uh, with that motion, would you request that uh, staff present hard copies to, to the, the to all board, board members? members? Yes, please. There's a motion and a second on the floor to table and to assure that all board members receive hard copies. All those in favor, state by saying aye. 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 Those against? Motion passes. Move to item number 10, closed meeting. Discussion under the authority of Texas, 551071. I have question number 13. I apologize. I missed one. On CA, but well, I'm sorry. I, I guess I took both of them together at the same time. Mm -hmm. I apologize. Uh, let's go back to 1407 813. Okay, I had a question on this. I briefly, I was una unable to attend the, the policy committee, but I briefly looked over the exhibits that were provided to us via email, and uh, I know this is pertaining to the superintendent's purchasing power, uh, moving it from 5,000 to 25. Uh, my only concern is the fact that we're in the middle of a superintendent search right now, and I just don't see the urgency for increasing the, pur the purchasing power and rather leaving it to the board to handle, you know, such purchases if they're required. So um, that was my question with that item. Well, uh, well chair for the uh, sure. policy my, committee. My recommendation right now, this, this item is actually tabled, but my recommendation is for... Uh, for the other board members to attend the policy committee. Uh, we want to send a message uh, to our new uh, superintendent, our hopeful superintendent, that uh, we're here to work with them and not to control or restrict them from their purchasing powers to conduct business for, for their services. Okay. And Where is it at right now, 10,000? Five. 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 I thought it was always 10. Yeah. Or, was okay. Again, let me refresh my request on action. My request to action originally was to incorporate both 12 and 13 together to be tabled. So being that the case, can we table them as, as, they've, as they've been tabled? I'll afford you the opportunity to, to, to review what has been presented again. And when brought back, those same questions can be brought back again, please. Thank you. Okay. Again, we'll move to item number 10, closed meeting, uh, 551-071, for the purpose of the private consultation with the board's attorney on any subject or matters authorized by law. 551-074, for the purpose of appointment, employment, evaluation, reassignment, duties, discipline, or dismissal of a public officer or employee to hear complaints or charges against a public officer or an employee, A, report of personnel, and B, employment, resignation, retirement. And we go into closed session at 740. Call this meeting back into section session. It is 7:53. Next item is A under open meeting. Action, if any, discussed in closed session. I'll ask for a motion to approve as presented. There's a motion by an Angel, second by Mr. Leal. All those in favor, state by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Next item 11, adjournment. We'll ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. second. All those in favor, state by. Meeting closed.